Hello and welcome back to Saving the uh, Western Roman Empire from, well, practically everything now. Um, when you join, well, if you remember last time, uh, there's a few things to remember from the last video. Um, mouse clicks were quite prevalent, I seem to remember. You could hear the clicking of a mouse quite a lot. Um, I had the camera a little bit further, the microphone a bit further away from my uh, um, mouse. Um, also, <laughs> everybody declared war on me. Um, apart from the Saxons, who look like they get ready to declare war, but can't quite can't quite muster it within themselves to actually do it. They can't bring themselves to, to declare war on me. Yeah, the Franks were doing the bits. I was thinking if they take Vicus Alamani, right? It's not a, it's not a fantastic city. There's you know it's still mainly barbarians. It's got a great hall and everything. Shrines to Frigg. Um, Frigg or Frigg, I believe, is the the um, uh, the, the the goddess for which we get the name Friday from. Frigg's Day. Um, in fact, our days of the week. Uh, in the English language, anyway, are uh, surprisingly pagan. You get Moon Day, Thor's Day, no, Moon Day, Twe Twigs Day, Th Woden's Day, Thor's Day, Freak's Day, Saturn's Day, and Sunday, the day of the sun. Whereas, if you look at the French calendar, that's things like um, Mercredi, or something like Midweek, um, Mardi, um, that has a meaning. They're like market day, I think. Uh, they're all like curiously depaganized. I don't know. That, that's a, I seem to remember. I, I knew it once, and then I've since forgotten. Oh yeah, and the Eastern Roman <laughs> and the Eastern Roman Empire declared war on me. That was the other thing. This great big blob here, where all the wealth and power of Rome now resides, has um, decided to declare war on me. And I have a nice big army here, but I don't know quite what to do with it. Could make a beeline for Constantinople. Not a bad idea, actually. I might, I might just do that. Oh, it's looks all that heavy infantry there. It's wonderful, and an assassin. Oh, very nice. So we'll move. Everybody along to there. Right. Gonna move on. We have the North African quadrant, so you know, making their steady way in their own time across uh, the face of North Africa. Uh, if I sound a little bugged up, that's because I still have, I got a cold over Christmas. It's I probably caught it on Christmas Eve, because um, when the pub that I went to one of the many pubs I went to on Christmas Eve was absolutely rammed. Like, we found a seat there, apparently, because my friends had got there at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, I, I went out a little bit later, like 5, because you know, I can't, can't start... Well, I can start drinking at um, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, but I shouldn't. Um, yeah, and it just seemed like half the town that I was in, living where I live. It's information I'm not going to divulge on, divulge on the internet. Um, sorry, um, was there, and I just thought, if, if one person has a cold, and they're all inside, and all the windows and doors are closed, and everybody's, you know, coughing and spluttering, it's like being on the central line in, in London, that is horrible, I went to down the rush hour once, and all I could say is, a good job I wanted to get off at that stop, because the crowd was pushing me off, and I was just taken away by the crowd, um, what am I talking about? Yeah. Uh, if you get a cold, if one person has a cold on the central line, you can bet that half of London's got it by the next day. So that's kind of what happened. And my Christmas day, I was feeling... That's okay. My brother got ill, actually, on Christmas day. And then on Boxing Day, came down with a cold. And I've still got it. So I'm currently dealing with uh, the after effects now. Can I, with this army here... And some mercenaries that have decided to hire. Huh. Sure, there should have been some sound effects there. Ah, oh, well. 
So he's decided to run away. Fine. I don't want to lose a Colonial Agrippa because it's um, one of my original sentiments. So what I might do is put... Hmm. No, that's not good enough. Put him actually in Colonial Agrippa so that if they do attack, stand a bit more of a chance. Because I sound really bunged up. <laughs> um, ah, of course. Marcus the Gambler is on the boats. There! Bang! The Saxons are, on, on, you know, uh, neutralised. That's the word I'm looking for. What can you tell you about Vicus Saxonis? Um Saxonas. Ooh, very secure, look at that. 190% uh, public order. I can't think of anywhere in my empire that's anything quite like that. Nope, they're, they're all on the brink of revolt. Ooh, Colonial Agrippa looks happy. Let's stop to that. <laughs> Whew, that's better. Um, um, Oh, it's tax rates. No wonder people are desperate to leave. Um, right, I, there's not much more I can do this turn. I was hoping that there would be a bit of a battle. Oh, look at those command stars. Um... Faction air, that's that's what they've got in there. They're not happy. Have you have you already killed this turn? Yes. What about you? Why don't you have a go at him? Ah, never mind then. Right, let's see what next turn brings. Hey. Ah, rats. Oh, I've forgotten about all these navies. Oh right, we get the points. The Romans, you know, navies wasn't weren't the Romans' strong points. Oof. Oh, well, that's that's just a kick in the teeth, isn't it? Right, you can build a ship, right? Does that do much for you? No, uh, not really. It might do more once everybody else starts building uh, stuff. So a family member, Frankish family member, Frankish fraction leader, and the heir, who's in the Invicus Frankie. What can you do? Build some sewers. Um, I've, I've just been there. Oh, oh, I don't know. I'm not building any any new pagan temples because that, that that seems like a bit of a waste. Ooh. Ooh, um, we'll have some nice big army barracks. No, I want to, I want to build up my funds first. If you build a dockyard, does that mean anything? Very little. I'd make my money back. Is that 200 a turn? No, it's not, it's not going to take 16 turns to uh, get your money back. Not farming. Oh, that's pathetic, that is. That was absolutely rubbish. Um up the market. It's, it's all just a bit pathetic really. Let's see if we can get any better deal, better value for money elsewhere. Who isn't building anything? Most people. Ooh, what do we do there? Huh, that's better. Uh, Carthage isn't building anything. Maybe it should. Hmm. Maybe it shouldn't. 
god, everything's so expensive. This is the exciting part of the video, this is. I, I thought I might get a battle, but, um... Looking increasingly less likely. Um, that would probably be worth something. Dockyard. Dockyard. See, once I build all the dockyards, the trade will be just free-flowing. Um, that's got to be worth something. Oh, yes. Some more of that. <clears throat> Now, uh, who, where was that? Arles, Carthage. I've been there. Carolus. Yes, you pull the ship right, and then when the pirates stopped blockading it, because I noticed that when I was talking about nonsense before. Um, Colonial Agrippa. Can't afford a dockyard. So the entire Western Roman Empire can't afford a dockyard. Um, let's feel the sort of the political dynamics of this of this game. Leave it like sorely lacking. It's a good game, Rome Total War, but you don't feel it doesn't feel particularly immersive in that realm. Well, it would be great. It's like a, a mix between. Well, I think it's been said before, isn't it? If if you mixed um, like the um, strategy of like Crusader Kings 2 or Europa Universalis with the Battles of Total War you'd have the best stra strategy game ever but um, I don't know how you mix them together but there must be a way Assassin ready. Death approaches. ooh useless what is the point of you um, oh I don't know But I mean, like, this this is all sort of... Had the actual Western Roman Empire been like this, where you, all the family members were all of the same family, they're all Flavius, as you'll notice. They are all reasonably loyal, and the emperor was the same emperor 18 months down the line. Um, I'm sure it would have survived just fine. Ooh. But, um... Ooh. Well, it's all happening on, on the Eastern Front, anyway. No more moves, sir. But, like, no, there's no general that's like this to sort of spring up out of nowhere, take his legions down to Rome, and claim himself emperor because the fellow's not doing a particularly good job. But funny that, like, actual civil war battles, like the later Roman Empire, didn't actually feature that many casualties. Like, as soon as the troops of one general thought that general was going to lose they would all just switch, and they kill the commander and then switch over to the other side so you find that like, they have these lots of civil wars and lots of like usurping emperors but the actual that death toll to the armies themselves in the battles were relatively low but it's things like that, like, the political stability of like, well, the, who's the emperor at the moment? He's Decimus the Executioner, he's 36, well he's about 30, he's been Emperor for 6 years, that would have been a, you know, like a rather long-lived um, Emperor post, like Diocletian and, Con and Constantine. Um, I've said that, there was like the, the Valentinians, wasn't there, the 1, 2, 3, I think Valentinian III might have lasted a while. The, the rule, they were the exceptions rather than the rule. Well, if the assassins aren't going to do the job, I'll have to do it myself then, won't I? Okay, let's move those over there. See what happens. Huh. Well, I like his command stars. Um. Okay. That all seems eminently manageable. And I've got some reinforcements. Okay, here we go. Time to sort the Franks out. And it shows what happens when you betray an alliance to the Roman Empire. Well, what you say what actually happens is you've usually got a nice parcel of land within the Empire. But... 
It's like I've got like all these, these armies set up along the Rhine, like to fight off any incursions. And I would... Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So what would have happened if like one general marches off to Rome to declare himself emperor because his troops made him to? It's like, there's... oh, who was his name now? Uh, it's like the one emperor. It's like he didn't want to like run to like he didn't want to usurp the emperor. It's like his legions forced him to, and I think. I thought that if he didn't like go along with them, they would kill him. So, so, so the legions say, this guy's emperor, and it's like, I uh, suppose I am. Yeah, don't really have much choice about it, really. But like, in marching to Rome, you're then leaving a nice gap in the fortifications along the Rhine, aren't you? And then you've got the whole thing where, like, I've taken out the Berbers and the Celts now, by taking two cities, three cities have knocked out two potential threats. Now you can imagine, that's not quite how it works in real life. But then, would it have been a fun game if... God Ooh. be praised! The reinforcements are here! Send them to fight! Dishearten the enemy! Right, now how do you fight Franks? Oh, there's a wonderful bit I read and uh, was listening to uh, Dan Carlin's podcast. Uh, what's it called? Something like Hell's Angels or something. Thor Thor's Angels, that's the one. Like where it, a part of it he likens um, the barbarians and the Germanic barbarians that took over the Roman, Roman Empire as being like ancient biker gangs. Uh, I'm gonna make a point that what was it now? Oh, I got so excited sort of describing everything, I've forgotten what it was. That's the stuff. It'll come to me. Um, that's an interesting point as well, but I can't for the life of me remember what it is. Right, you can cover the flanks. Oh, well, that was it. Like, um, the Byzantines apparently, those Foley Romans have just decided to declare war on me, um, had like a handbook. I think the Chinese had something similar where they listed all of the different um, like barbarians that they face, on them, what they looked like, how you could identify them, and how you dealt with them. And it's like, Franks can be recognised by, you know, like, tall, blonde hair, the rest of this, or, you know. How do you deal with them? Don't engage, try to get them drunk, to take away, what is it, take away their sources of alcohol, apparently. That's how you deal with a lot of Germanic tribes. Right, somebody's routing, and it's not me! Huzzah! Okay, I'm fast losing track of this battle. Yeah, the Chinese had something similar, I think. Like, always like where bureaucracy was strong, and like, uh, they're surrounded by what they viewed as inferior barbarians, they just sort of that had like less lists for them, like Zhong Nu, like uh, have this appearance, like have these habits, how you deal with them like this. Now the thing with the French is like don't engage with them one on one. Uh, try to avoid a fixed battle with them because like the Germanic barbarians had like not honor culture, like f fighting and dying in battle. It's like just their kind of thing. Now have I killed the the leader or is it just some some schmuck? I think it might just be some schmuck. Uh, try to yeah, try to reform, fight an organised ranks against disorganised barbarians. So you get out of the way before you get yourself killed. This is the kind of thing that Franks would do: charge headlong into battle. It's like you try to disorganise them, use trickery. Don't engage them in an honest fight because that's what Germanic barbarians were all about. Uh, can't get too hard on the uh, on the Franks, of course, because thanks to the Battle of Tours of Poitiers, they turned around the, uh, the Moors. Right. 
we are, forget the rest of the army for, the, for a second, because we are getting very close. Don't let him get away! Gotcha! Death! And now the rest of the battle is a, a cakewalk, because now they're all routing. Well, I think all those commanders deserve uh, deserve a promotion. Not not too not too high up. Right? Deserve a promotion. All oh, right, emperor. No, no, not not that far. So thanks to a an, a mixture of um, assassination and targeted battle tactics, take out all of the generals, and the horde faction dies away without hoarding. Run! Oh, that's better. <laughs> now, as always, this is always a dangerous one. Can you charge a block of spearmen and cause them to rout before they form a defence? Fortunately, yes, because they were exhausted. The enemy's hearts are full of fear, and now they flee. Right, that's one army uh, completely broken. And if they do the job, they can break the other two, the other army as well. We just need to take out these two. There we go, there's one. Our hunters are very good. They are. Because if, if you combat them with some of their pagan temples. Oh, there we go. Like, you get have uh, temples. Uh, the pagan temples are really good. Like, some of them add uh, experience. A lot of them add experience, actually. Some of them add experience plus morale, and some of them add like we missile weapon strength. So if you get hunters, and they tra you train them in the right city for the right temples, they have like gold, you know, gold standard um, weapons. Um, you're probably not going to get there, but you can look busy. They were worth every penny, weren't they? Look at them. Oh, they are going to get there in time. Look at that. So I, I seem to remember like having three separate trains of thought for the country in that battle. None of them focused on the battle itself. Well, apart from that moment where I said, "Yes, guess him." Um, Demands victory from her generals. And this day is clear. Well done. Oh, not, not too bad actually, look at that. Men deployed 1600, 1490 left. Men deployed something similar and left 160. Plus, I've got two scalps. Victory! Which I think should mean um I'll go on. Huh. Yeah, never mind. It wasn't very good anyway. <laughs> How heartless am I? Right, so let's build a siege tower and a couple of ladders. Um and then we move these two and now we've got some nice heavy infantry for the assault. And there should be no problem with taking the Frankish capital because I've narrowed them down to just the faction leader. So there. Unless, knowing my luck, in the next turn between when the assault happens and when, you know, it all kicks off. Yeah, when the assault happens and, and the rest of it, one of their family members might come to age. It'd be a 16-year-old faction leader who manages to hoard them all. And you know. That's just my luck. Never mind. Uh, yes, military tribune, excellent. Now I've just got to keep an eye on him because ooh, look at all that military review tribune, drill master, herbalist dislikes pagan ways. Barbarian turncoat, but you're generally a veteran. A master of soldiers in the Western Empire. 
and the Master of Assassins, and the Barbarians leave. So he's just the kind of person you want in the front. It's such a shame that, um, oh, the Reds, he's disloyal. Apparently loyal. There's, there's no loyal generals left on the front, apparently. Good. So we've calmed the situation down on the on the the front that front there. Um. Fleet ready. Can you build? Yes, you can build some plumbatario. So why aren't you? It's a bit difficult, but I can. Ooh. Awkward sort. <laughs> really, I'm trying to get you support to keep you safe. Oh no 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 no! I'm not ranking with a. I'm not taking command of a under a lesser admiral. Um, I can I can ship troops from one end to the other. Ooh, I think I got rid of some vital information there. But it's going to be difficult with this monstrous uh, Byzantine navy bearing down on me. Um, the sea is not a very safe way of transporting people, but it's quicker than going down this, these road networks. I mean, he has been travelling now for about four turns, and he's only got... Oh, don't, don't you dare. Don't you dare try and take the midi. I'll not be happy if you do. Although it's no great loss, because the, they are brigands and not uh, the, the Berbers. Hmm, now what do we do with him? Why don't you do a bit of a reconnaissance? Oh, so, whoa! Retreat, blimey. Right, what does next turn bring? The Lombards want to talk to me. None of them, so they just want to bribe me. Uh huh. Uh huh. You, you get in port and keep yourself safe. There's writing in Cordoba. Yeah. Also, look at it. Let's get some decent funds in there. And there'll be more writing if I don't do something about it. Fortunate, hopefully, this pro consul's palace will be just a thing I need. And add a nice arena in there. Tarako. If you build a shipyard, what will it mean? Uh, very little. Um Yeah, do that. And to midi You get some more Federati infantry. Why were why were we able to recruit North Germ well, sort of Germanic people in the middle of the Sahara Desert? Uh let's not Oh dear. Um, <sighs> you know that stuff I was talking about, that being able to deal with hordes by making sure they don't cross the Danube. I've been a little busy, haven't I? Uh, um, okay. Lousy Sarmatians. Um... Well, Salona could... Hmm. No, that doesn't do anything. What would do something is a nice shiny new gold mine. It is a literal gold mine. Look, there it is. If I lose Salona, I'm in trouble. Um, so perhaps I could, like... Try to ship as many troops as I can find there. So there's two places you can fight off hordes fairly effectively. One is at rivers and the other is in cities. Um, who's that? Those odds are terrible. Um, assassin ready. Assassin ready. 
Not at fourteen percent, it probably won't. Who shall die this day? Hmm. He shall be removed. It's not worth it. If he dies, if the if, if the bodyguard gets killed by the guards and it's revealed to be a Roman. Hey? I don't remember that. <laughs> Who authorised that? I didn't I certainly didn't. Um yeah, apparently we're allies with the allies of the Alamani. Okay, so Vickers Frankie. Oh, that should be that should be no problem. Let's do this. Ah, but <laughs> apparently we're friends now. Or was it the Western uh, Western Roman rebels that they're allies with? Because I certainly didn't authorise it. Um, would you like uh, my map information? For you know, a good solid price of 2,000 denarii. Huh, fine. Be like that. Huh. I wish they'd like show what. Oh, oh yeah. Well, your your purpose is fr frankly done now. What we might do is put you in port so it doesn't happen again. On on the plus side, settlement is rioting. Why? Oh, Christians. Huh. Well, there we are then. Wait, that's um, no. I've just, I've just created the bot for me and back there. I'm surprised I didn't convert it earlier. It's got like Spain or Hispania, Iberia converts itself to Christianity. You don't have to send the God Squad in. Speaking of which, I've forgotten about them. So you head up to Iburicum and do your stuff. We got shrine to Mithras, new shrine to Christ. Public order of zero. We should be alright though, yeah, yeah, in a little while. Um, conversion by force. They're still in the 30s, so there's plenty of conversion they can still do. Mediolanum. Oh, <laughs> well, that's my budget spent. Sorry, that's it's it's all been spent. Yeah. Look at that trade. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, and Londinium. Superb. What a trading hub. Who'd have thought it? Cordoba has built its thing, and so therefore it's fine. Now, um, okay, I've got, I've got enough battery to do a siege of Vickers Frankie, Frankie I. Right, that should theoretically be no problem. Okay, here we go. Oof, oof, oof. <clears throat> now, hopefully, the Franks have spent a lot of time and energy building up all the nice infrastructure in uh, Vicus Franki, Franki Alley. Because the Franks, unlike the Saxons and I think the Burgundians and other more Germanic Germans, um, can build things like stone walls and roads and other. Well, yeah, every day is a day for brave deeds. Carpe diem, I say. What's funny that. Um, this is a big city. Okay, the the town. Oh, the town square is over there. So, a 
Let's take you over there. Because I've got I've got the numerical advantage, so it suits me to spread my forces out, thus weakening his forces. So the two ladder squadrons on this wall and the siege ladder will attack this wall. Now he hasn't really, he's got one set of archers, good archers, hunters, fantastic archers. Um, gonna make it, let's think of a joke then, or like to, a way to fit it into the long-standing radio for uh, radio drama um, of the same name, but nothing really came to mind. So I thought I'd just half-heartedly mention it, and mention that I thought I'd come up with a joke for it, but didn't. And <laughs> in lieu of actually making the joke, I do that a lot. That's too much, really. Like, say, what I would have made the joke out of, rather than, you know, just making the joke itself. Now, that, Mimitanii, Comitatensis, Federati, they seem fairly balanced, so we'll call this group Group 1, and this group... Hmm. Group... Blimey. Uh, this group, Group A. <laughs> so it's not hurt, not, not hurt any feelings. Okay. So this is how it works. They go onto that wall there, he goes onto that wall there, we all move in. I need to find a charger from the camera, which I'm using in lieu of a microphone. I, I need to get a decent microphone. Um, oh, it's all gone wrong. And here we go. Hopefully, the force of it doesn't knock over my camera. But if it does, well, um, they're swearing and cursing all around. Well, there won't be actually. I think um, I think we've got a fairly good track record on uh, being family friendly. Apart from that one episode of uh, that video I did with. Um, it was a steam hospital, that was it. And there was an earthquake and it blew up with an inflation machine. Well, I, th I felt justifiably angry. Uh, <laughs> no, I want you over there, and you over there, and you over there, and you over there. And we're off. Yeah, right, you on there. You over there. Oh, I like this song. I used to like it when it came on on Time Commanders, which was a program on BBC Two uh, sometime during my childhood. <laughs> um, sent by Adrian Child, I seem to remember. Um, now there's a man. I don't understand this. <laughs> I don't understand this a career or how he got the job. Uh, it's quite high, big. It's like big. Quite a big profile now at ITV. Like, does the, the like does the main sports coverage, like the football coverage, despite the fact he's never never played and he's not. I don't, I don't think he's done anything anything else. Like, he's, he just got into the job of being presenter. He used to do BBC's Working Lunch, um, the one show on the BBC. Uh, then he moved over to the ITV and he's got a spot and said the only connection that he's got to football is that he's a West Bromwich Albion supporter. Um, so, <laughs> so a tenuous one. <laughs> boom boom. <laughs> uh, yeah. um, Axe here, Ban. Your ladders are at the enemy walls. One well, of the uh, subtitles useful. Exactly, I guess courage, what use are walls? Exactly. 
So the normal sort of response to this attack that I'm doing now from the AI would be to withdraw all of their all their troops to the center. What's that? It's funny really, you don't really think of the Franks as being particularly Germanic on account of the fact that they are responsible for the nation of France. Uh, the Germans, of course, still call it Frankreich. Um, and I think the Alemanni are largely responsible for... I'm going to, I'm not going to say the German state, because there's no such thing as the German state. It's really just 365 various constituent parts that have been lumped together, first by Napoleon, then by Bismarck. But the fact that the French call Germany Alemannia as in uh, Alemanni, suggests the link between that. That's also from Dan Carlin. I get most of my historical little tidbits and Franks. Uh, Franks? Uh, facts. Franks on the brain. Um, from Dan Carlin. Uh, there's, there's very little original thought into what I say or do. <laughs> Nor indeed is there in what most people say and do. I'm just honest about it. Oof. <laughs> Yeah, but be honest, look, look into yourself, and how many times have you, like, like, you said something at a dinner party, or to a group of friends, and you, did you actually come up with that thought, or did you, did somebody else say it, and you think, that's a good idea, and it's such a good idea, it's something I might have said, so I'm going to act like I've said it. No, just me. Oh, never mind then. Oh, what do I do with this axe here, Ben? Because for better or worse, siege towers are useless for getting people up in a hurry, because there's only one ladder. Head for the hills. No, don't head for the hills! Don't, no! Stop! No, stop! Don't do that! Go over... <laughs> That'll teach me for zooming in and not looking at where I'm pressing. Ooh! You can take control of that, yeah, that tower there. Now, get yourself ready for the oncoming Axe here ban attack. Over there. And here it comes. So this is the problem with siege towers. Like, they really need to get everybody up there, but there's only the one ladder. Whereas ladders, plural, actually, how are they doing? Um, fine, thank you. They're doing grand. And not being fired on by that tower, which is rather fortunate. But you can you can set up camp now down there. Uh, you two. Well, you can climb up that wall. You can go there, and you can climb up that wall there. See the beauty like ladders can be reused. Um, so many things that I... Like, I've had this game years. I think I said this last video. Like, I'm just thinking about how I used to play it back in 2003 when I was, uh, Younger than I am now. I must have been, like, a teenager, I think. But, like, siege battles like this, I just skip because I couldn't be doing with the hassle of taking stone walls. Wooden walls I was fine with. And I never really played, uh, Barbarian Invasion that much. There were lots of... How does, like, who's stronger, Axe here bands or Committed Tendencies? Hmm. In terms of armour and discipline, probably the Committed Tendencies. In terms of courage and raw fighting power, um, probably the here band. But the forces are balanced evenly, so, you know. Courage versus discipline. Um, that's, that's not fair of the Romans. They were they were courageous. Ah, no, they're going to lose. They've got some. Uh, they've got some archers raining down upon them. So their flank is under attack. 
I haven't said that. Yeah, look at that. Your courage and individual heroism and bravery can uh, take a back seat, apparently. I was saying, yeah, the Romans were, you know, early Romans, the early Roman like Republic and the overthrowing of the, 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 the mythology surround overthrowing the last of the Etruscan kings has the features a great deal of like personal hero heroism in duty in like sacrifice to the state or the Roman state. Um, I, don't know where, I don't know where I was going with that. Whereas um, the fall of the Roman Empire, Gibbon blames on Christianity, as, as well he might. Um, he must have been writing for the time though, the time of like the, the age of reason and the Enlightenment and such like, um, suggesting that Christianity took the place of the state in like the highest virtue that educated and um, so well-meaning Romans could attain. So rather than giving your duty to the Roman state, you gave it to the religion instead. Huh. Eager, shaken. You can hear that marching sound. I don't know if I've got it turned up loud enough. But there's a nice bit of like a clunk, 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 clunk. Ooh, steady, steady. And the difference being that I've got reinforcements I can send up. They don't, I don't think they really have. It's all the material, because while this is all happening, I'm um, marching over to the, the HQ. Oh no, it's a bit difficult because he's there. It's rather important then that I get this gate open. Wavering, steady, shaken, steady, wavering, shaken, shaken, wavering. Let's send these mercenaries in because they're costing me a lot of money. <laughs> oh yes, 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 this will finish them off. Yes! And again! Again! No, never mind. Look, that's why Peel are particularly useful. Like the sudden loss of troops, like sudden shock of losing so many troops usually sends a lot of troops over the edge. But these people are still wavering, shaken, shaken, wavering. So for all the good that I've done getting troops over here, There's a quite a sizable portion. We do need the gates to be open. Actually, that's why I want you over there. Against Levy Spearmen, I think they'd do quite well. Another thing to watch out for in siege battles is mere time limit. Oh, hold on a second. My apologies, sudden and urgent need for a cup of tea. It's a, <laughs> a British affliction, I don't know. Um, and where was that? I was getting really quite into it. I've uh, broken my stride now. Yes, they were doing their stuff over there. Some reinforcements were standing by. If they add the numbers in, they'll get turned from wavering, hopefully, to fighting to the death. Now, I have a troop over here that's going to try and take on the Levy Spearman. I've got to watch out for the Levy Spearman because they have, they have their own set of peeler. Which I think is cheating. That's copying, that is. Hmm, or oh, rather than fighting for th no. Yeah, rather than fighting for that gate, why don't you go and join your friend or colleague, probably more accurate, over the other side. 
They're shaken, they're eager. But it's all slowing me down, which is a problem. Right, what do we do with these? I want them to... Ooh. What's, what's their game? Now they're pulling back. See, you, you knew that they would. Right, charge. Oh, that sound. I know, it's, I know it's been said better and by other people. Uh, other people and better. About the, the, the music and the feel of Rome 1 versus Rome 2. I know there's, what's his name, Mendel Sanity, did like a series of videos on him. And they, they, he does have a really good point about how like unit collision and how it feels more organic and more like... And the composition of the music really drags you into it, doesn't it? Um, well, I still had a feeling of it then. I mean, lots of the time I'm playing games and it's just like, you just jaws open. <laughs> Automatic lights of response to it, but the music had so much more to the game. Oh, look at that, Russ. Oh, and the towers are firing them. Oh, beautiful. Hoist with your own petard. <laughs> Answers in the postcard, what a, petard, what a petard is and how you can be hoisted by it. And it's probably not what you think. <laughs> actually, I'm not going to get any comments, so I'll just tell you right now. Petard is actually a form of an explosion. Now, the, the adjective hoist makes it sound like it might be an item of clothing or like a rope or something to be hoisted by. But yeah, a petard is to be hoisted by your own petard, is to be blown up by your own explosive. Um, so there, yes! Fighting to the death. Which means you, I want you lot to move forward. Now I think this costs more in terms of casualties, but makes makes the battle move faster. I think. Right, if they, if they were to just continue fighting as they were, they would just stand in a line and like move forward in a steady progression. Whereas this one, I'm actually instructing them to move forward through the line of like fighting to the death types of here, bam. Here, man. Doesn't sound French at all, does it? It's a constant reminder of just how German the French are. <laughs> oh, another thing about whether you call him Charlemagne or Charles de Grosse. How was it? Carl de Grosse, that's the one. It's uh, an easy way of upsetting people, apparently, of a certain delicate, uh, delicate nature. The same person, but it's whether you acknowledge that Charlemagne was French or German. Well, the sense is both, because that's where the Holy Roman Empire was sort of... It's, it's like, yeah, incorporated, incorporated both of them, so they're kind of both right. Also incorporated parts of Northern Italy as well. Oh, that might have come, that might have come later. Oh, I finished my book on the Popes, by the way. I know, I know, you, were, I know you were thinking about it. You, you were wondering. You're like on the edge of your seat in, in anticipation as to that half-remembered fact that I got from that book. Did I, read, did I read all of it? Uh, the answer was yes. It got worse as it went on, um, unfortunately. The stuff from the early popes and the, the like, early medieval popes was very interesting. And the Renaissance popes are always interesting because of the nature of who they are. Um, like as I got nearer and nearer to the present day, I found I was getting less and less interested. So the time I was on joke with John Paul, Pope Paul II, Pope John, uh, John, Pope John Paul II, there we go. <laughs> All the right words, not necessarily in the right order. So, you know, more cool, more wise line there. Um, yeah, I found it quite, you know, quite, I don't know, it just didn't have the, the lustre. Maybe that's because the papacy didn't have the lustre and interest that it had during like, the Renaissance years, perhaps, when it was spiritually bankrupt, but quite interesting, really. Okay, the gate's open then. Um, doors open, boys. Um, that one's a, that one's a Simpsons quote, I think. Um, yeah, it's when they're doing a, the, the the spoof of like um, what was it? They call me Bill. They call me Bill up on Capitol Hill. 
Oh, wasn't it like a famous cartoon that it had in there, like the 70s in America, explaining what the Bill of Rights and things like that were and stuff? Yeah, the Simpsons did a parody of it. Like, uh, uh, but if we change the Constitution, then we can make all sorts of crazy laws. <laughs> now you're talking, and there's like made the Constitution, and then it's go, doors open, boys, and all these bills run into the building, and like one of them whooping and holding a bomb. Um, it's a lot funnier when you watch it than rather than listen to something to describe it. Um, oh, I think Old Simpsons are, 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 are brilliant. There's a cut-off point, isn't there, between Good Simpsons and Bad Simpsons. No purists say it's about season eight, others say about season twelve. But what you know is when you definitely when you get to season twenty-four, you're definitely in the bad zone. Um, nothing, nothing against like the, the writers or anything. It's just that as a concept. It, like all concepts, it just gets stale, doesn't it? I mean, the first uh, the Simpsons is as old as I am. The first episode was the Crazy Woman show in 1989. People, it's 25 years old. Things don't have that kind of sell-by date. Ooh, they're fighting to the death as well. So there's no need for him to run around the side of the building. Never mind. Oh dear, how so? Never mind. Um, right, you can move forward over there. We've still got. 27 minutes remaining. That seems rather generous. For a siege, it's complicated. I'm usually running out of time by this point. I'm sorry, I've got nothing. That's now I'm partially supposed. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> sorry, a list of like um, buzz, Buzzfeed. That all they do is make lists. Uh, it's, that's that's the rubbish way of making a living. I could, I could, <laughs> any living where I think I could do that is not not a good way of making a living. <laughs> it's, it's twenty, well, like twenty ways, of, like twenty types of people that I know it was like Mr. Well, like modern Britons characterised as Mr. Men characters, uh, which I thought was rather a shame because I used to quite like the Mr. Men books and to have it uh, into like a. Like represent forms of moral depravity of modern Britain. <laughs> uh, I thought it was very well, but one of them was Mr. Always quotes Alan Partridge, which I wasn't particularly imaginative. Never mind. A bit rather harsh on Buzzfeed here, but <laughs> they do some good things, like uh, Malcolm Tucker quotes as part of the motivational posters, which I thought was quite funny. I quite like that one. And there's, there's others, but well, some of them are like 23 ways you know you. I don't know, you mean your job too long. Um, 17 and a half ways uh, you've, you've eaten too many meals. Um, 8.6 ways of you know, skinning a dinosaur. Actually, it's not that, it's, it's ways that. What was it? So and so number of ways you, you, you know you've something, something, something. It's like any, any sort of article that could be randomly generated by a computer. Isn't doing its job. <laughs> um, yeah, and the, the the fella there, one of the the Mister quotes too much. Aren't always quotes one part. She's just like a Mister Man character. He just says Jurassic Park. Um, there's better partridge quotes. Um, oh, we when we watched Alpha Papa, the the film. Um, I think we may have been a bit drunk at the time. We watched it once, loved it, immediately watched it a second time, uh, and then the third time we just went to all the good bits, uh, which just more, more or less said that we'd, we're basically watching it three times in close succession, um, and then quoted heavily from it. It's a very quotable movie, and it is rather quite funny. Um, But that, well, that one from uh, was from Mid Morning Matters, where they just well, it's, it's, it's interviewing a can local councillor, and they just like they have this other person there, other presenters there, having a sensible co co uh, discussion, and then he just suddenly comes in and goes, uh, 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 uh. no, sorry, it's gone. <laughs> Again, it's probably better if you watch it rather than listening to me try to describe it while I'm waiting for the troops to get into position. I don't know, I'm not 
terribly big fan of Alan Partridge on account of the fact that a lot of the things he says sound like things that I might say in a different context. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like he just says something. I don't, actually, yes, you do know what I mean, because I mentioned this before in a different video. Um, it's like, Alan Partridge did a sketch where he asked people what their favourite wall was. I did that on my own accord earlier on, like a few years ago when I was at university. I was rather impressed with the worst of these person who came up with an immediate answer. Everyone else gave answers like, why would you ask that question? That's horrible. Wars are horrible. And the most of his fellow just said, what was it? That was it. Just came back straight away. Yom Kippur War. Oof. And then gave sound reasoning for it. Made you to run into position because they might charge at any point include you. Run over there. I have a feeling like the more I talk, the less you like these Let's Plays. <laughs> it's like the more you know of a person, the less they like you. The less you like them. Um, okay, well, we'll just slowly close ranks. So I, I think this is an ideal way of using Roman legions. It's like to run, stop, fire peeler. Like, try and do it. Uh... Yes, fire them, peeler. Um, you can you can take on those those hunters. Gotcha. Let us hope. Yes, let us hope. He's still got his bodyguard though, which is a bit of a pain. <laughs> I mean, could they not like resign now that they've ultimately failed at the job? Paladin bodyguards. The paladins are like ultimate, the ultimate French thing, aren't they? Paladins, chevaliers. These archers are doing a good job of fighting off. Oh, well, they are Limitanier. Limitanier. Yes? Um, any Latin speaker? There's a Pope watching. He can, he can tell me. Um, what was I saying before I made that, that, that aside? I'm a terrible member for this kind of stuff. Oh yeah, chevaliers and, and paladins. Well, that's that's the end of them anyway. I remember them from Age of Empires too. Like they were the what are they, the Frank's unique units, and they were like excellent horsemen, fantastic. I guess everyone apart from samurai. Now I know that samurai, their special attribute for the their unique unit was good against other unique units. Seems like a bit of a cop out to me, but never mind. But how, but by how varies different like um, people's unique units? How can you have one unit that's good against everything? I can defeat a road warrior and an English longbowman and a Frank Paladin and um, I don't know, Viking Raider. And there we go. Now, if I've done this right. Uh, this uh, this should cause a um, hmm, fairly heavy casualty announcement. I must have been better just like auto resolving it. Certainly, it would have wasted less of your time. <laughs> oh, never mind. Hopefully, this won't cause them to hoard because I, I will have finished off the Franks. Please. Ah, oh, rats. Exterminate. Hmm. Huh. No, on the contrary. On the contrary, they, they've got like a, a house full of family members. So, uh, hmm. Well, this could work in my favour. Like, if they march into Saxon territory now, 
Um. Ooh, royal stables. Oh, look at that! I can I can build some Equite Sagittarii. Um. Federati and Sarmatian Auxilia. So that was well worth taking. And plus three experience. Um, the Great Hall and the Meeting Hall. Unfortunately, they've not. They didn't, they didn't build a decent barracks, but that's okay. I can build one. And you. Now, this is the clever bit. Pay attention. <laughs> you can make committed tendencies. Send them to Figus Frankii. They can be retrained at the Temple of Wotan. Uh, or Woden. Um, so disloyal. A Roman hero. Hmm. Convert to our cause. Convert to our cause. Who? Um. The will of God. Oh dear. Recruitment reports. That looks all very good. Rioting in Tarako. That's old news. Ah, uh, what about the best laid plans? <laughs> this is exactly what I was hoping to avoid. Still, what I. Oh, I don't know. Hopefully they won't turn around and go straight over to Vickers Frankie, which I've just tried desperately to hold on to. Well, no, no, I've just desperately tried to capture. Um, merge them. Uh, what's the peasants in? And some Iquite Sagittarii, who are a really good way of dealing with like Germanic people because they don't have horsemen. Anyway, that's like complete failure of a, of a policy. <laughs> They'll cause problems down the line. Uh, we'll deal with this, the, the after effects of that next video. So I'll see you next time. Ta ra. Ta ra. What the hell was that?